Alright, let's go. Alright, let's go. To open the meeting for the regular scheduled meeting for the license commission it is now 604 in the gra building uh thursday october 21st if we can rise for the pledge of allegiance please i, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all if we could just remain standing, um, our former ch our chairman, Hank, uh, passed away a few weeks ago. Just like to take a moment, just to in his remembrance. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And gals, sorry. Chairman, you want this to go open close? What do we do? You leave it open. You leave it open. Yeah. 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 We need the air. Yeah. So, a little, little breeze comes comes through. All right. So, gentlemen, are we ready? We're ready. All right. So, first order of business: review and acceptance of the minutes of the regular license commission meeting of September sixteenth, two thousand twenty. Motion. Motion to approve. Same. Yeah. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Second order of business, uh, the approval of the following police officers as licensed agents for the month of October. Lieutenant Paul Bianchi, Paul Bianca, sorry, uh, David Farrell, Sergeant Corey, George Corey, Christopher McDonough, uh, and Tim Station, Stanton, Stanton sorry, Captain Hallisey, William Hallisey, detectives, Eric Cummings, Jackie Condon, Eric Clark, Santiago Serino, Thomas H Haley, Michael Bunker, Nazar Paul, James Cornshaw. Move to accept as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We have zero old business. Uh, So we just ask that everyone uh, wear their mask um, and just when you come to the mic, just try to pull the mic toward you. Just speak into the mic. Um, so the first request, hearing on request from Brockton Arts Inc, Gallery 33 for a special one day. Canceled. Done. canceled. Bravo. So the second one is hearing on request from Prover for a for a special one day permit to sell wine and malt beverages for, and a special events permit for a pop-up event to be held at the Sycamore Grove Brockton, uh, October 22nd, 2021, 429. A representative from Prova here. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> there you go. Hi. Can you all hear me? Just wanna, yeah, just yep. want to tell us about the event and... Yep, uh, request for a special... Identify yourself. Hi, my name is Yvonne Severa, one of the co-founders of Brockton Beer. We'll be one of the hosts there at Prova, uh, serving uh, craft beers. Uh, this is very similar to some of the events that we've had all summer, uh, Thursdays and Fridays for, the, for this uh, 2021 without incident. Uh, we're just looking for a special request for tomorrow. Um, yeah. If Can there's you any give questions? Your, just your um, address to the secretary, just so we have that. Yeah, behind. Uh, give the address. Your address. Oh, my address. Yes. Uh, 121 Main Street, Brockton. All right. So this is uh, Prova. Kind of, you guys are the same folks that have been running it since. Any questions from the commission? Just what is a pop-up event, please? Yeah, this is uh, similar to a beer garden. There are a few folks there having beers. Uh, there will be music and food vendor. Uh, Prados is actually the food vendor that we selected. Uh, there's no more than probably about 150 people uh, throughout, the, throughout the afternoon from 4 o'clock till 9 p.m. Uh, again, uh, it's primarily uh, a community event 
people are having a few uh, few beers and having conversations. Thank you. Yep. Tenet. Uh, as far as the police department is concerned, uh, we reviewed the application and uh, we don't have any objection as long as the police detail is obtained for all hours of operation and also to clear a, a crowd from the property if needed. And um, the fire doesn't have to sign off on it. I mean, this is this this is this event has been going on. They just they're adding on a day. Oh, Eddie said they're all set. So, they're all set. Okay. I was going to say, Eddie said he was going to bring yeah. it. Yeah. No, he called me. Yeah, he called. He okay. said they're all set. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, the mayor has approved it. And the mayor's office has approved this as well from our legal council. I don't see any opposition in the crowd, so we motion. motion to approve pending receipt Second. of required letters. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> just, uh, let me just make sure we get the bottom. Aye, thank you. Yeah. Just, up we have hearing on request from George Northern Lights Inc doing business as George's to remain open until 3 a.m. on New Year's Day January 1st 2020 for a New Year's event celebration being held <coughs> in December in a New Year's uh, December event being held on 31st located at 228 220 to 228 second rear Belmont Street Brockton Okay. Um, can we have a motion to move this to the end of the meeting if they show up? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. So we'll move to the next request. Hearing on a request from Blazing Wings, Inc., doing business as Buffalo Wild Wings for a change of managers, manager, on an all alcoholic beverage restaurant license located at 486 Westgate Drive, uh, Brockton, Mass. Hey there. How are you doing? Just I'm good, thanks. I'm David McCaffrey. Just your address, too. Uh, it's uh, 380 Franklin Street, Duxbury, Massachusetts, 02332. May proceed. Well, uh, we're just changing managers. I have the I am the uh, assistant general manager currently, uh, with the expectation of being promoted to general manager. Uh, and I am in the restaurant five days a week. I have several um, managers who work below me, all of which are um, uh, serve safe certified um, for alcohol uh, service. And we train everybody on our team uh, through serve safe as well for responsible alcohol service. I don't have any. Anyone have any? No. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Just on that motion, Lieutenant, do you have anything to add? Uh, no objection. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved, sir. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Hearing on request from Brockton's post 1046 VFW of the US Inc. of us of us Inc. for a change of manager managers on an all alcoholic beverage club license located at 283 North Quincy Street, Brockton, Mass. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, sir? All right. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yes. I have to re recuse myself from the life number. Okay. So noted. Um, can you just note that? Yeah. Just um, your name and address for. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Robert Graham. I'm currently the commander over at the VFW. Um, 
My home address is 6 Alphonse Road in Baraka, Mass. Um, the address of the VFW is 283 North Quincy Street in Baraka. So are you coming on as the manager? Uh, yes, I have been the commander since 2019, and we're just getting around to changing the license. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we started it, and then COVID happened, and we stopped. Questions from the commissioners? Motion to approve. Second. Lieutenant, nothing? No objection. Motion to main and second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Good luck, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. All right. <clears throat> okay. Hearing on a charge brought by Brockton Police against Cardoza's Cafe Inc., located at four six um, one four six one four eight Montello Street for a, an alleged violation of ABCC rule 2.052. No licensee shall, no license for the sale of alcoholic beverage shall be permitted any disordered, dis, disordered disturbance or illegal uh, <laughs> of any kinds to take place on or on the licensed premises. The licensee shall be responsible whether present or not. Uh, this incident was reported on August 8th at approximate, August 8th of 2021 at approximately 1.08 a.m. And we have the parties here. Mr. Cardoso. Yes. Good evening, members. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Great. Uh, so the format of this is because we have a couple of parties that are going to be speaking. So we'll hear from um, we we'll hear from the Cardoza uh, representatives, and then and then and then council will speak. We can start with the city. Okay, we'll start with the city. So we'll start with the city, and then we will hear from. Just want to make sure that our, our secretary has the names, full names and full addresses names. For, for the uh, for the record. For the record. Yeah. Do you so have? we'll have them just say their full names and addresses for the record. And then we will have the city position. Sir? Folks, would, oh. you, would you give me full names and addresses of both of you, please? Yeah, yeah. to the city, I mean, to the clerk. Uh, attorney Scott Martin from Mr. Cardoso. To 234 Copeland Street, Quincy, uh, Suite 230. Thank you very much. Sorry. The same with us. Please Carlos, give me address. Carlos Cardoso at 112 North Warner, Brock, Mass, or 301. Yep. yep. So again, William Bartlett, Assistant City Solicitor. Uh, this matter is before the commission as a result of two incidents, a stabbing and a hit and run, with both, which both occurred on, at Cardozo's Cafe on August 8, 2021. By way of background, the establishment was also asked to come before the commission uh, due to complaints received uh, following multiple disturbances uh, involving the establishment in September. Uh, during a review of those disturbances by the Brockton Police Officers Assigned to the License Commission, it was revealed that these two occurrences on August 8th occurred. Lieutenant Banaka subsequently spoke with the owner, Mr. Cardozo, who stated that he was aware of both incidents. However, Lieutenant Banaka, Banaka determined that uh, after doing some investigation that the establishment did not notify the police of the ongoing disturbance. Um, so I'm going to take testimony. I have um, Officer Cabral and Montero. Thank you of the uh, Brockton Police Department here, and those uh, were the officers who responded on August 8th, as well as I'm gonna take testimony from Lieutenant Banaka. Um, I can swear all the witnesses in now, anyone who will be testifying. You all raise your hand. Uh, do you swear that the testimony you're about to provide in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be gone? I do. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, Officer Cabar uh, Cabral. Um, could you please state your name? E. Wilson Cabral. And you're a police officer with the Brockton Police Department? Affirmative, ma'am. Yes. 
And uh, you're assigned to the patrol division? Affirmative. And um, I'm just going to direct your attention to Exhibit 2. Ma'am? Can you identify that document? It's the report that I took on August 8th, 2021 at approximately 1.08 a.m. in the morning. And so I understand you responded to an incident at Cardozo's Cafe on that date and time, August 8th? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you just summarize uh, what happened and what your investigation was? On August 8th, officers were dispatched to Cardozo for an assault and battery in progress. And a, the caller stated there, there's a large fight and someone was hit by a car. Upon arrival, we learned that one of Cardozo's security guards was stabbed in the leg by Officer Montero to my left. He was assist the person who was hit by a car. I also Cabral spoke with the security guard, Anthony, who was stabbed, who was stabbed in the leg. According to Anthony, while he was trying to assist his co-worker, Jose, with the combative party, the male party stabbed him in his right leg with a knife. Anthony stated he does not know the suspect or knows where the suspect went after, after stabbing him. Anthony was transported to, was transported to Brockton Hospital for further, for further medical evaluation. I then spoke with Jose, who stated the unknown male party was trying to fight with someone in the bar. At this time, Jose asked the male party to leave the bar. The male party left and shortly returned with a small knife in his hand. Jose asked him, Jose asked the male party to drop the knife multiple times. When the male party refused to listen to his verbal commands, Jose at this time pepper sprayed the male party. Jose then attempted to disarm the male party. According to Jose, the male party was becoming more combative at this time. It was around this time that Anthony came and tried to help him to gain control over the male party. While they were trying to gain, oh, to gain control over the male party, the male party stabbed Anthony in his right leg. When the male party noticed that he had stabbed Anthony, he, the male party left the scene with an unknown female in unknown direction. Jose was, stated he was not hurt. We checked the security bar camera, but it was, we were unable to locate the, he, the suspect. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Uh, Attorney Martin, do you have any questions for? Just a few. Good evening, sir. How are you? Come on. I'll be brief. Um, Mr. Cardoso showed you the video of the establishment with, with, without any objection, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, was it, were you able to see the, the, the fracas that was going on inside the, the, the bar area? The video was a little blurry. We couldn't see much. Okay. Could you see an altercation starting to ensue? Negative, sir. Okay. Uh, did you know that uh, the gentleman, Anthony, and the gentleman, Jose, they work for a professional security company hired by my client? That's what I said, sir. Right. And, uh, and I'm not saying you didn't. Uh, um, in, in an attempt to not have an, um, a fight at the bar or what have you, those security officers tried to remove the male party that later brandished a knife? That's what they told me, sir. Yeah. And you would agree that th that's a proper step for those people to take? It depends on the circumstance, sir. Okay. Well, certainly, if there was a fight about to ensue in the bar, you would want them to try and separate that, correct? Affirmative, sir. And have the aggressive party leave? Affirmative, sir. And uh, to the best of your knowledge, I, I know you, you arrived later, the male party who brandished the knife did that independently. Uh, he wasn't connected with Cardoso's Cafe, correct? He, for what I understand, they said they don't know the, he, the, the suspect, sir. Okay. And he did this while when he was asked to leave uh, independently, um, unbeknownst, unbeknownst to my client, that it was about to happen? Yes, sir. So you would agree that um, no employee of Cardoso's Cafe permitted the disorderly conduct. The gentleman did that on his own. They tried to stop it, essentially. That, that's what they told me. Okay. They and tried they, to stop him, but I don't know what they told him. That caused him to went outside and come back with the, with the small knife on his hand. So. Were you able to interview any witnesses at the scene and find out if the security guards provoked the altercation to go further or if the gentleman did it on his own? I tried, but as always, they were uncooperative. They did not want to say anything. Maybe afraid to get involved because of the situation with the knife or whatever? I'm not sure the reason why they didn't want to speak so, with me. Sir. So, so you have no definitive proof, so to speak, no, no fault of your own, sir, that the security guards escalated that in, in any, any fashion? Um, Negative, Or sir. that the gentleman did, it, did that on his own because he was angry about being removed? Negative, sir. I'm not sure why. I'm sorry? He, uh, I'm not sure why he did what he did. Um, I have no other questions. Thank you, sir, okay. very much. Uh, thank you. I have nothing further with this witness. Um, I'm going to uh, now take the testimony of uh, Officer Tony Montero. Could you please state your name? Tony Montero. 
And you're a police officer at the Brockton Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Assigned to the patrol division? Correct. And I'm just going to direct your attention to Exhibit 3. Can you identify that document? Yes, it's my report. And a report for what? For an incident that occurred on August 8th at 108 a.m. Okay, and can you just summarize what happened that night? Yes, uh, on the above date at, a, at 108 hours, I was dispatched to a disturbance. Upon my arrival, I observed a large crowd gathered around a party that was laying on the ground. He appeared intoxicated, it was very belligerent. He stated that there was a, he was denied entry at the, at the bar. There was a commotion outside and an unknown motor vehicle left at a high rate of speed and hit him in the leg and fled the scene. There were no witnesses and there were no plates information at this time. His injuries were minor. He was transported to the Brockton Hospital via ambulance. Okay. And did he cooperate with you? Uh, no, he was not okay. cooperative at all. But he eventually got into the ambulance? Yes. Um, that's all I have, if there's any questions. I just have a few. Um, do you know if security, uh, professional security guards were working at Cardoso's Cafe that evening? Yes. Okay, and they kept the person out who was intoxicated trying to get into the establishment? Yes. And obviously as an officer in this town, you, you would agree with them doing that? Yes. Okay. So in no way did Cardoso's permit any fracas or uh, disorderly conduct. They were trying to prevent that by keeping the person out of the bar? Correct. And you would agree that sometimes you can't help an independent act when it comes to your establishment. You can just do your best to try to keep it out? Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> did Cardoso provide you with the security footage of, of the establishment uh, upon request? No. Did you ask for it? No, I did not. Okay. It was not necessary? Correct. All right. Um, and the gentleman who was intoxicated, you said, was uncooperative with yes. your investigation? Um, and you were notified uh, about the incident, and that's why you responded, correct? Yes, sir. You were notified by Cardoso's cafe? Well, my dispatch. Your dispatch, okay. Yes. And you were there uh, fairly quickly? Yes. Okay. And to the best of your knowledge, w was security still maintaining their post at the door to make sure that nobody else involved was, would get into the establishment? Correct. Okay. Um, and my last question. So to the best of your, I mean, I'm sure you're a very well-trained officer. I, I know your experience. I, there's not much more Cardoso's could have done in that situation, you'd agree, besides keep the person out and make sure it was reported? Yes, sir. I have no further questions. Thank you very much, sir. That's all I have, uh, these officers. Um, if there's nothing more, I'm going to let them go. I, I, I don't need to question. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank That's you, guys. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to take testimony from Lieutenant Bonanca. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. I'll, I'll yell. Um, can you please state your name? My name is uh, Detective Lieutenant uh, Paul Bonanca. And you're a lieutenant with the Brockton Police Department? Uh, that is correct. And what is your role with respect to License Commission? I am the uh, police uh, liaison to the License Commission. Okay, and um, September of this year, I understand this establishment was scheduled to come before the Commission for ongoing disturbances? Correct. And then um, and you took steps to prepare for that meeting? Uh, yes, I did. And what's I, Good. I researched uh, the calls for service, and I took a, uh, just a random three-month period between June and September. And I noticed that there were uh, 20 calls for service. And to determine this is just to uh, view the daily log of the Brockton Police Department, which basically logs all the incoming calls for service, which I did. And in that uh, three-month uh, period of June to September 19th, uh, there were uh, 20 calls for service for Cardozo's Cafe for different violations. Okay, and um, I'm just going to direct your attention to Exhibit 4. Can you just identify those documents? Exhibit 4 uh, is a cover sheet that uh, I uh, partially prepared, and I believe uh, the times in uh, the day of the week uh, was... Okay. I'll represent that I provided those. Um... Provided those, but I... Uh, formulated the document which uh, basically cites all the calls for service between uh, June 17th and September 19th of this year. And the subsequent documents are those calls? That's correct. I also enclosed uh, copies of the police department daily log with regards to each call of complaint. Okay. And so in your review of those documents, uh, were, you were made aware of the incident, the two incidents on uh, August 28th, 2021? That is correct. And those yeah, incidents that the officers just testified to? That is correct. Okay. Um, and when you became aware of those incidents, did you speak with Mr. Cardozo? 
Yes, on the 15th of uh, September, uh, I visited uh, Cardozo's Cafe. And I spoke to the proprietor, Mr. Carlos Cardozo, about those incidents in question, specifically about the 8th of August that the officer testified to. Carlos stated that he was aware of both the stabbing and the hit and run. Uh, we received uh, four phone calls from uh, residents reporting the incident. I tracked each resident down and determined that they were not connected to the business in any way, shape, or fashion, all phone calls. Uh, Carlos stated that his daughter slash employee called the police, but it was uh, determined that neither the establishment nor any employee reported the incident. The phone numbers on the call log didn't match Carlos's phone number, which he provided to me, the business, the daughter's or employee's uh, phone number, or the business line. Therefore, uh, the, uh, the, the charge of failure to notify police upon the event of a disturbance uh, was clear to me at that point. And uh, do you take further steps to confirm that those uh, numbers didn't match any numbers uh, associated with the establishment? I did. I actually, uh, the numbers that are in our call log, I called those numbers and I spoke to uh, the owners of the phone, three of which, uh, actually two of which determined that uh, they were calling, not connected to the business, but they were calling for the, a disturbance. The last caller had stated to me that they, they denied they called at all. Okay. Um, and so then directing your attention back to Exhibit 4, which uh, the August 8th incidents are in, listed there, but I just want to go through um, the other disturbances that have been reported. So on, uh, I see the first one is uh, June 17th, which was a Thursday at 12.52 a.m., uh, what was the disturbance there? Uh, the, the disturbance was uh, in our call log. It says that a, a male was refusing to leave. And upon the officer's arrival, it was determined that the party left. There were, there were no further issues for that unwanted guest disturbance. Okay. And then the next page, June seven, uh, 19th, which was a early Saturday morning at uh, 2.21 a.m. According to the call log, uh, there was an assault and battery in progress that was reported. And... Um, the um, uh, apparently uh, the caller stated that groups of people outside were fighting. Uh, the officer did arrive, and according to the call log, no fight upon the officer's arrival. But the officers did clear out the crowd. Okay. And then uh, the next page, June twentieth, which is a Sunday morning at twelve oh eight a.m. According to the call log, uh, a large group outside trying to get in. Security said they may have weapons, none seen. According to the officer who arrived, the group cleared out and they agreed to go home. Okay. And then, um, so then uh, the next page is June 21st, which is a Monday, so Sunday night um, at 1.10 in the morning. At 1.10 in the morning, uh, that would be uh, the, in the call log, a disturbance was reported. A male party was uh, ejected from the restaurant and uh, the, um, the person had left prior to the arrival of the officer. Then uh, next piece is June 26th, which is Saturday morning at uh, 12.50 p.m. This was an unwanted guest disturbance that was reported at Cardozo's. And uh, in the call log, the, it states that the male was being aggressive to females inside. Uh, male party uh, left the location without issue. Uh, there was no issues with the male. Uh, the, uh, the security still requested the male to leave for the night and the party was advised. According to the officer, the party then left without any further issue. The matter was settled. Okay, and then um, the next page is actually the, the following night, uh, Sunday at 1.33 uh, a.m. Uh, there was a disturbance reported at Cardozo's and in the call log, a caller states that people are getting out of the club, cars are burning out which would be a, um, just another phrase for uh, uh, the tires squealing on the, uh, on the uh, cement or the, uh, the roadway. People yelling when uh, the officer arrived, the matter was settled. And then the next two dates, um, one is July 9th. It, it's not at the time of the closing, but um, July, uh, it's taken July 9th on a Friday, but it refers back to a date on July 3rd. There was a, uh, a report of a narcotics investigation, and it was a female that believed that she was, um, she may have been drugged at the above. Uh, an officer took a report, and the case is still under investigation. And I'll just represent that Saturday was a, um, that July 3rd was a Saturday. Um, on the next page is July 19th. It's also taken um, after the fact, on a Monday, it refers back to, I believe, the following. That, that was a larceny investigation. That was a uh, complaint uh, regarding Cardozo's Cafe. 
Uh, this complainant alleges a theft from her vehicle, which was outside. Uh, and um, that matter uh, of report was taken by an officer and uh, the case is under investigation. Okay. And then um, the next page, uh, July 24th, which is a Saturday at uh, 2.09 a.m. And uh, this was a report, uh, a complaint of disturbance, loud music against Cardozo's Cafe. Uh, an officer arrived, the group left the above location, playing loud music out of their cars, disturbing the neighbors. That matter was then settled. And then um, the next page is July 24th, Saturday a.m., um, Saturday at 2.54 a.m. And this was a robbery investigation against uh, uh, Cardozo's Cafe. Uh, this uh, complainant stated that four, me four females robbed him with a knife, took his money and car keys, and the females left in a vehicle. And uh, the male was waiting outside for officers, and uh, there was a report taken, and the case is still under investigation. Okay. And then uh, the next page, July 25th, which was a Sunday at 2.04 a.m. And that was a disturbance against Cardozo's Cafe. The uh, complainant reported multiple people leaving the bar being loud and obnoxious. Uh, the uh, officer reported that there were no cars out front. When he arrived, there were no issues and the matter was settled. Uh, the next page, August 1st, uh, Sunday at 2.07 a.m. That was a report of an assault and battery in progress at Cardozo's Cafe. There was a group of people fighting outside, no weapons. That was what was reported. And uh, the uh, parties left prior. And so that matter was settled. Okay, and then um, the next one is a Monday at 12.59 a.m. This was a report of uh, uh, assault and battery in progress at Cardozo's Cafe. There were uh, 10 people fighting, no weapons. Uh, this was an employee that called stating someone is yelling that somebody has a gun. Uh, when the officer arrived, it was deemed that uh, the matter was settled and uh, that's how that concluded. Okay, and then the next two reports um, relate to the incidences that we already heard testimony from, but they were on August, both on August 8th at 1.10 uh, a.m., correct? We did, and I just want to also make note that uh, when I did speak with uh, the proprietor, Carlos Cardozo, I asked him for the video for that, and they keep it on a 20-day loop for that. So when it came to my attention, I was not able to obtain the video, but the 30 days is actually what is, uh, uh, what is suggested uh, to the uh, proprietor, and he said he was going to update his video system at some point. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, skipping ahead to two pages, we have um, August 21st, which was a Saturday at 1:57 a.m. And that was a disturbance, and the uh, it was reported that a male inside was trying to start fights with other customers. Upon the officer's arrival, that matter was settled. And the um, next page, August 21st, Saturday. So the same night, um, or was, oh, was that the, is that the resolution of that? Uh, it was at 2.11. Oh, uh, at 2.13. Oh, they came back. Okay. The following page, sorry. At 2.11? At, at, um, or is this 2.13? At 2.13. Yeah. Okay. Um, Probably the same. The, uh, this is the disturbance at uh, Saturday. Yep, I see. It says males came back, did something to the door. Males came back, did something to the door. They, uh, they're they scared to come out. That matter was settled when the officer arrived. Okay, thank you. And then um, August 30th, which was a Monday at 12.32 uh, a.m. And this is a call about unwanted guest disturbance at Car uh, Cardozo Cafe. Employees are having issues removing four females from the location who refused to leave. By the time the officers arrived, that matter was settled. And then the next page, um, September 11th, which was a Saturday at, um, looks like 11.05 uh, this is an unwanted guest disturbance. Uh, this was at Cardozo's Cafe. A, a female was uh, was ejected from the premises, now kicking the outside door for people trying to get in, uh, also trying to fight people inside. And um, that matter was settled when the officers had arrived. Okay. And then the following weekend, um, September 20, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the next, yep, September 19th, which was a Sunday at uh, 1.22 a.m. At uh, 1.22 a.m. at, at this was an unwanted guest disturbance. Two males from New York at the door uh, refusing to leave, starting problems. And then uh, they ended up canceling because the parties had then left. And that is um, all I have for that. I don't have any further questions. Oh, do but, you have something to, else to add? I just wanted to add that uh, not every single call here was, uh, was called in by the ownership, uh, by the proprietor. So. 
there could have been further violations. There were uh, calls from the premises, which is certainly, uh, that's very, very uh, fine and, and, and very acceptable that the, that the uh, Cardozo establishment did call on many of these, but there were some that they did not call. Specifically, the one that is, is of concern is the one from August 8th, which the two officers testified and Mr. Cardozo stated that he was aware of it and the daughter supposedly had called, but, but we at the department dispro has, has disproven that. Okay. And that would be my final statement. Uh, and just um, statement. looking at the, the summary of all of these disturbances, uh, is there a time of the week, time of the night that these tend to happen? Well, if the, um, the, the sheet that I submitted, and if you look at the times, if you can see the times, they're, they're mostly, in fact, uh, nine, not more than 90%. They're going to be on a, uh, a weekend night, and they're uh, going to be at the, at the late hours of the morning. If you look at the call, the call log, would be 12.52 a.m. on a Thursday, 2.21 a.m. on a Saturday, 12.08 a.m. on a Sunday, 1.10 a.m. on a Monday, which would be Sunday night, Monday morning, 12.50 a.m. on a Saturday, 1.33 a.m. on a Sunday, and then going on further. These are all late at night hours, mostly uh, right about closing time. That would be the majority of these calls. So within, within that last hour of that is, business? That is correct. Mostly, okay. Uh, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Why are you, sir? Why are you? Um, fair to say that a, a large majority of these complaints are coming from uh, the loft apartments across the street? Uh, w well, in terms of uh, looking at the phone calls, uh, it wasn't determined exactly which, which one of these or how many of these calls came from the lofts. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to saying that. I'm sure many of them did, but uh, not every single call came from the lofts. Uh, certainly not the ones that the officer testified to. Okay. Not everyone, but, but, but many may have come from the loft. Certainly many could have. Do you know how long, uh, when the loft apartments um, were built? Uh, I, I, I don't have any knowledge exactly when, a few, uh, years, a ago? few years ago. No, longer than that. Longer than that? But well, uh, th when they moved in, they knew they were moving. When they built the lofts, they knew they were building across the street from a nightclub bar, correct? Cardosos was there long before the loft, correct? Uh, that would be correct. And you would expect, not stabbings and such, I'm not crazy, but you would expect when bars let out, whether it's midnight, one or two in the morning, because oftentimes, not just specific to Carlos Cardoso's cafe, that any bar or restaurant and such, there'd be some noise and cars sometimes revving the engine, things of that nature while the crowd's disperse. Well, I think if you're asking, if it's an opinion that you're asking about, is that my opinion would be that I think that people, no matter where they live, should be able to uh, be in peace and should be able to, uh, to enjoy the privacy and also not have a disturbance that would occur regardless of whether it's a bar or, or any other establishment. I understand that, but, 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 but knowing, I mean, any bar or nightclub that you deal with, and I know you have a lot of experience, typically when, when they're letting people out at last call, no matter what time it is, there would be some noise. People getting to their car or maybe saying good night to each other or what have you, things of like that. Well, it's, an, it's definitely an issue, but it definitely would not be acceptable, uh, certainly for uh, residences that are nearby or, or apartments. But I understand that that would exist, correct? Right. And you know that uh, Cardoso's Cafe, they hire security. You're aware of that? That is correct. And they, they do try to keep people from coming. All, all of the reports show that they're trying to keep people away that are coming in intoxicated. I can't speak for all the reports, but I have seen a couple of a, a few reports that security has tried to maintain a hold of the situation. But it, but, but apparently, it appears as though it's not uh, it's not working. And well, to be fair to Mr. Cardoso, uh, many of the complaints by the time the police arrived, they have cleared out. Right? That has happened in, in many instances, correct? So, and, and you did know, and I appreciate you being candid, that they do the employees and security do call the police um, when they are not able to handle it themselves. Fair to say. I, well, what, it, what I did already previously testify to is certainly the most important uh, event in that three-month period. There was no notification to the police. And I can't speak for, I, I, I did say that uh, numerous uh, complaints in, my, in this 20 complaint uh, document, Cardozos did call. But uh, there were many that they didn't call, but the one that is the most important would be this August 8th incident. And, and Mr. Cardoso was under the impression his daughter called, but you confirm, fairness to you, that, that she did not call. That is correct. He, told you he was under the impression she did. But you would also agree that with a history of calling, that that may have been an honest mistake, although a bad mistake. That, that could have been an honest mistake he thought his daughter had called. Uh, well, this was, um, this was on the 15th of uh, September. He stated to me that, uh, that his daughter called the police, therefore... Uh, on the 15th, that didn't happen. Uh, right. To me, that appears to be more than a mistake if it's more than a month 
uh, from he, that date. He was under the impression that she did call, though. He told you that. I, I can't speak about his state of mind, but I can tell you that he told me that his daughter called. Right, and it was incorrect. It was incorrect. I, I understand. But with your history with Carlo, Carlo Joso's Cafe, when you, you, you've spoken to my client numerous times, correct? Correct. And whenever you have to look at a video, if it's available, he shows it to you? I, I've, I have had no complaints with regards to Mr. Cardozo's cooperation. He appears to be cooperative uh, when I do enter the establishment. I appreciate it. And with respect to telling you the truth and being forthcoming? Well, uh, truthfulness, uh, depending on our, the comments that I uh, just made about his daughter calling, that wouldn't be truthful. But it uh, depends on how you characterize it. I should have clarified, uh, sir. Except for that incident, uh, typically he would be forthcoming and he would speak to you when you wanted to speak to him. That is correct. And he'd give you information? That is correct. Okay. And, okay, so I think we've covered that sufficiently. Um, you're not alleging that Mr. Cardoso is permitting any of this behavior. It, it just seems to be happening there, correct? Uh, that is correct. Okay. And, the, and the security guards that he, he uses are from a professional security company, not just pe any people off the street that may not be trained, correct? As far as I know, I'm not entirely sure about the extent of the experience of the security company, but I will qualify my previous statement as saying that cooperating with the police is also calling when it's needed. And uh, the seriousness of the August 8th incident required the bar to call us. Therefore, when it comes to allowing, uh, that would fall in line with allowing a disturbance to be, uh, to be held without calling the police. Understood. And, and if he thought that his daughter had called and he was mistaken, it's still serious and, and something that's frowned upon. I understand that. But, but as you said, he has a history of being forthcoming and speaking to you and other officers. Correct. All right. um, if you just have a moment. There's one point I want to make. Oh, and you, you said that when you wanted videotape that he had a 20-day loop and you would appreciate it if it would be a 30-day loop. It's a 30-day loop is usually what's standard and I wanted, I, I, we requested a 30-day loop. He did tell me that he was going to update his video system at some point in order to uh, provide us with uh, video within a 30-day period. But at that time, he only had a 20-day, therefore the video from August 8th was unavailable. And I may be wrong, you may know this better than I. I think the, re the legal requirement, which we're, we're going to go above that, I assure you, I think it's 14 days, correct? It, it, it appears to be 14 days, correct. And, and he was doing 20, which showed that, and I know you want it to be 30, but he was going above what the legal requirement was. And I want to assure you, it's not a question, we are going to go to 30 days if it makes the police happy. We, we, we want to work with you. I'm not trying to be combative. I, we want to work with you and not against you and, and the panel. So we can assure you that within a few weeks' time, if not sooner, it will be 30 days. And if you need it to be more, we'll, we'll do that as well. Again, that's a recommendation, correct. Well, well it's a, it, there's no problem with it. Uh, if you want it to be more at any point, just let us know. We're all ears, and, and we'll do that as well. Thank you. I have no other questions. I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, lastly, I just want to direct uh, the Commission's attention to the last two exhibits. Um, exhibit 5 is a letter um, submitted by Mr. Corbs of... Uh, of the station last night. I understand Mr. Corbs is here tonight, um, so we'll, we'll let them speak once we're close the um, hearing, or once we close the testimony. And um, Councillor Thompson is also here. And then lastly, Exhibit 6 um, is the prior discipline that's been given to Cardozers. Uh, and the first is most recently, uh, two, three years ago, um, the Cardozers before the commission due to uh, letting a patron in the bar after hours. Um, that incident led to that person's arrest and also resulted in a injury to the officer. So the punishment that for that was um, a seven day suspension of their license and a rollback of the hours from uh, 2 a.m. to close it um, to 1 a.m. And uh, for six months, that was then, uh, their hours of business were then restored in June of 2019 at that hearing. Mr. Cardoza testified that they had had no incidents um, since the rollback went into, in fact, and asked that it be restored, uh, at which time the commission uh, gave Cardozo their two o'clock closing back on weekends. Um, the second document there is, um, you know, it's it's a far back, it's from February of 2012. However, it actually deals with a very similar incident. It was a stabbing at the bar that uh, was not reported by Cardozo's. They were found guilty um, of violating uh, 2.05, section two of the ABCC rules. And at that point, they were also um, handed down a rollback, a six-month rollback that was later uh, restored after the six months. Um, I, sort, I do have a short closing uh, that, in sum, that 
the, it's the city's position that there is a violation of ABCC Rule 2.05 Section 2, um, and the city would ask that a, um, an indefinite rollback of the hours is appropriate, at considering the length of history and um, the like lengthy disturbances that we're talking about here. And um, finally, you know, even if there's no violation of the rule, the the standard for a rollback is whether there's a public need. So. Um, Certainly a rollback of the hours is warranted in this situation. That's all I have. And again, I, I acknowledge that there's um, other individuals here who might want to speak. Yeah, so we'll, we'll hear from um, um, Mr. Corb and then uh, Councillor Thompson can want to step. <clears throat> you take that seat in that mic. Just You just give your name and address for the record. Sure. Do you want my home address as well, or the property that I own in Brockton? Your home address. Sure. My name is Jason Corb, K O R B. My home address: 25 Columbia Avenue, Newton, Upper Falls, Massachusetts. I'm the owner of Station Lofts. I've um, I constructed Station Lofts in 2013. It's 25 units of mixed income housing. We have mostly families in the building. They're a really tight knit community. Um, and they're really, really affected by this. Um, we love a restaurant and a bar across the street. That would be like a great amenity to our residents. But when things like this happen, right? And like this happen, when people are getting arrested and stabbed, right? That's not exactly what we're looking for. Or when an owner treats their property like this, when we, take, when we pick up the trash every day, you know, when I came to downtown Brockton, I think I was probably the first one downtown to do this, to do a project. This was a public-private partnership with the city. The city actually has funding in, in my development. Um, and this is, not, <laughs> this, this is not what I envisioned as what was gonna happen in downtown. Um, I reached out to Mr. Cardoso to try to resolve this amicably, to not have to go in front of the license commission. I talked to his uh, daughter twice. Um, and while he said that he wanted to change things and was open to it, clearly nothing's changed. Um, we've had a lot of incidents, some of which are directly related to Cardoso, some of which are not. Um, but my residents are scared, they're tired of this, um, and this is not acceptable behavior for adults, personally. I gotta say, like, this is not adult behavior, okay? So I wanna read for the record my residents' words. These are my residents' words in my letter. I, I think it's really important that I read it for the record. And my residents are not here today because they're, fr frankly, they're scared. What actually started all of this was that someone broke into our building, pulled a fire alarm, vandalized two cars, and then people actually reached out to me, bypassed my management company, and reached out to me telling me how scared they were. We held a resident meeting, and people kept bringing up Cardoso's as an issue. Lots of single moms, lots of people that really work hard, and they needed to sleep on the weekends, and they needed to not be scared. Um, so they say, you can hear the bass of the music the entire night, which is extremely annoying and aggravating. Disrupts trying to fall asleep, stay asleep. Witness patrons parking in our lots, so they park in our parking lot, to go into the establishment. Witness patrons going into their cars, leaving out of our lots. Seeing garbage left on vehicles, my guest cars in the morning. When going into the establishment and exiting, patrons are loud, yelling, arguing. By the way, I have video, tons of video if you guys want to see it. So I'm gonna show you one of it tonight, from October 2nd, by the way. This, this is dated September 15th, and all the incidents that the lieutenant, it's the lieutenant, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. read off were prior to all of that. So like, there's no care about what's going on over here, okay? Totally dismissive. Patrons will sit and, patrons will sit, excuse me, patrons park also across the street in the city hall parking lot. Patrons will sit in the lot, large amount of cars, whether the club is still open, but specifically when it closes, blast their music and or just hang in the city hall parking lot after club closes for long extended periods of time. Many times there have been fights in the lot, problems with loud bikes have occurred, racing, revving, etc. We've been approached by the patrons entering, exiting, which then encroaches on our safety living at station lofts, feeling safe at home within our own environment. We are continuously woken up Saturday, Sunday and Monday mornings throughout Due to this establishment, ongoing situation and its patrons. This is their caps. Everything is here is theirs. People work and have jobs to go to the next day. 
I'm tired of being woken up every weekend due to this establishment and, and its patrons, exclamation point. I went and told someone to move the car politely. He was in our parking lot. This guy tried to hit me with the car. I think in, in early August, 2021, two people were arguing and one of them got in their Jeep and ran the guy over. Ambulance came and everything, the guy is okay. And we know that was true because it was documented by the police. The constant noise and honestly just not having any police present also is very bad and scary, especially if you are coming home in the middle of the night, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday nights. As a parent, it is very frustrating and honestly scary coming home and not having parking because the entrance is either blocked in or parking taken by club goers. And a lot of our residents work jobs where they work at night and they come home late at night. It is not safe and is not the area for a club to be located, especially next to an apartment complex where 80% of the building has children. <laughs> The danger is knowing that the people who leave at night are too drunk and are leaving, driving, leaving the facility. On numerous occasions, I have watched from the window unidentified people stumbling, driving through a one-way, which, by the way, is in my letter. If you turn to this page, this is a one-way street. So everybody can see, okay? Park the wrong way. Blocking our entrance so residents cannot come in, and the worst is people throwing up all in the street and the noise levels are just too loud. I'd like to show you this video from October 2nd as well. <laughs> I hope it works. It's been stagnant for a second. So this is kind of what happens. This is October 2nd at 1.56 a.m. Okay? So we have resident windows right here. Okay? So you can obviously see there's probably loud noise. There's some fighting, people pushing each other. On my property. This guy's running around. I have a resident who's trying to sleep right there. This is not okay behavior. Not please okay Please don't behavior. address me, sir. Please it's not okay behavior. Please don't. Not okay. So I think in addition to rolling back hours, Mr. Cardoso needs to show a plan as to how he actually plans to address this. Because if this gets rolled back to 12 a.m., this is gonna happen at 12 a.m. People are probably being overserved. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I can tell you that, and maybe the lieutenant can opine on this, that not every bar in the city this is happening with. This is happening here, okay? So some people are able to control their, res their, their clients. Just because you own a bar doesn't mean that you're not responsible for controlling your, your clients. So we do a lot of work around the state and I've never seen anything like this. This is inappropriate. Thank you. Can you not leave yet and like to ask some questions before you leave? You'd like yeah. to ask some questions? Please. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. First of all, a copy of this letter have a go to the police department? Uh, yes. Okay, why, why do your residents not call the police? My guess is they probably do. I guess it's a number of those. You my guess. The computer. Did you find calls? A lot of calls coming from that area. Well, for the um, for this hearing, which was originally scheduled last month, I did a three month log of uh, June to September. So I didn't do the log for September to uh, late September to uh, October. But I, I mean, I certainly could, and I'm sure that the call log would reflect if there were 20 calls for service from July June to September. I'm certain that. Uh, with what the proprietor of the law office had mentioned, um, I, I, certainly I would find another, maybe another dozen calls. But uh, the hearing was originally scheduled for uh, late September, and that's what I originally prepared for. Now, I have to, I'm going to be asking questions here, but don't leave. Police details, do we have any officers working, or is it just private security? Well, uh, is Mr. Cardozo, um, I'm not entirely sure, has he been, trying, has he been attempting to get police details from, from, that, uh, from the department? Yeah, he, he tried and he was told at the current time they're not available, but he has tried and we're willing to do that. I, I will, on the weekends at least. And I will say, uh, uh, Commissioner, that it's been difficult to be obtaining details because uh, we, we are, uh, as you know, in terms of staffing, uh, you know, we have had some shortages. So in order to provide details, we have to have the available officers and we've had availability problems. So bars, uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to accommodate 
Retired uh, officers are able to take a bar detail? Can I say that? Uh, they, they, they certainly would be able to take a bar. Okay. The specials would be able to take. I'm trying to, I'm trying to mend fences and get everybody to work together. I, I understand what's going on there. Uh, and I feel for your people. If I lived there, I know I'd be calling the cops. Your parking lot, your own parking lot there. Do you have signs up the cars will be told? We do, yes. Okay. And we're implementing a new sticker system right okay. now. Okay. Well, you're not going to like to hear this, but you don't probably need an officer around your lot, too, because the easiest way to get them to stop parking there is to have somebody there who can call the tow company and yank them. The other thing is this. When they leave, they're parking to the north. That's the north, okay? That's 28 north. But it doesn't look like they just go right across the street to that parking lot that we're talking about. They have to be herded, and then we're going to need SDPA, Lieutenant. That's a supervisor director patrol assignment. And when that place closes, it's their job to get them out. Just go down there. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Those are the words. And if it doesn't, it's gone. Because I sit here and I hear that all of a sudden, it's really frustrating. I'm a lifelong Draftonian. I've worked by it. I've owned a bar. I've lived in the city. I, I, and I, I feel bad for you and your folks. I feel bad for any person who's got a business who's, who's trying to make a living. So I'm sitting here and I'm going to hopefully have some ideas to, to pass over. It, it, Mr. Studensky, if I could, I don't mean to yes. interrupt you, but along the same thought process you had, I was going to suggest maybe a retired officer because I see that in other towns as well, and I know there are short short, short staff, staffing issues, maybe even state police uh, until we could find somebody. Maybe they might have more resources uh, as well. We would we, certainly be willing to work with you um, to do that. And he has tried. It's just well, I used to be in the police business. I'm out of it now. I'm just a, a license commissioner. But, <laughs> but to, to, to see what's going on, it's, it's kind of scary because the folks over there deserve to live right. Yeah. He's got a business. When did you buy your business, can I ask? 2002. It's been there since 2002. 2002. 2002. 2002. When was your building? 2013. Same. What, what year? 2013. 13. Okay. That's uh, right. Do you mind if I comment on the police detail? Because there's an important piece that's missing here. So we actually did have a discussion. Officer Salomone, Stephanie, his daughter, and myself had a conference call about police details. Because I tried to work with them. I want to make this very clear. Oh, I'm I didn't sure just, you did. No, I didn't just run to the license commission. Okay. I'm a neighbor. I'm committed to downtown Brockton, okay? Mary Waldron's like family to me, okay? So like, I tried to work with them and we made a suggestion. Please don't shake your head at me, counselor. We made a suggestion, which was, and Officer Salomon agreed with this, which is that Cardosos can specifically request police details from other cities and towns in the area if Brockton doesn't have availability, okay? That was the last I've heard about it. So that is an option. So, okay. and, Dr. and Officer Salomon made that very clear that that was an option. Well, let's let's um, let's hear from the counselor, and then we can okay. do our we can do our deliberation. Yeah. So, Councilor Thompson, if you wanna, sorry to keep you waiting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like me to? You guys can. Sure. sure. Yeah. Thank thank you. I would, if it's, if you find it pertinent, I would have some rebuttal to some of the assertions by Mr. Corb, if you find it necessary. If not, then I, then I would I like to. Counter that rebuttal. Have an opportunity. No, no. So there, so that portion is closed. So we'll have Council Thompson. We'll deliberate and then. We will make a decision. So, Understood. Counselor. Great. Uh, thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of this board. Uh, Councillor Jeff Thompson, uh, Ward 5 at 45 Ames Road in Brockton. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pro-business pro business guy. I, I want all businesses in Brockton to succeed, but it's important that they follow the rules. Um, I had the opportunity to hear and listen to all the testimony uh, that you've heard tonight, and I think there's a recurring theme. There's one that uh, there's uh, out of a three-month period, we have over uh, 20 uh, calls. Um, and all those calls seem to be taking place at a certain time of day. Um, the incidences of the stabbing, of the, um, of the uh, hit and run are very concerning. Uh, I have met with the residents of Station Loft and I concur with uh, what Mr. Korb has relayed to you. 
uh, these, these residents are fed up. Uh, they, they're dealing with these late night disturbances on a regular basis. Uh, these are uh, Brockton residents uh, that have families. Uh, Brock, the city of Brockton over the last five years has uh, made a serious effort to develop our downtown. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars downtown, both private and, um, and public funds. And what we have to ensure to the residents downtown is that they're safe uh, and that they live in a, a walkable community. And we just don't have that around station lofts. Uh, the, the incidences of Cardoso, uh, I've seen the, the photographs, I've seen the videos, and it, it seems to be a problem of uh, people leaving a bar over into overly intoxicated, uh, fighting, causing a ruckus, uh, and, and causing a disturbance. As Mr. Corb said, we have many bars in the city of Brockton, and uh, they're not all in front of you uh, with these types of disturbances. Uh, we've, I've been in front of you in the past on other bars who committed um, similar types of disturbances, and, and this, this, this commission acted, all right? Uh, you, you acted, uh, your justice was, I believe, equitable and fair, but uh, you know, this wasn't an issue that you felt time will resolve it. Uh, we look back over the past year, uh, time has not resolved it. Uh, this is the, from uh, what a uh, uh, counselor uh, stated earlier, is that this is the third time this bar is in front of you for similar type of um, violations. I think your, your, your um, resolutions in the past to roll back the license, I think was uh, warranted. And uh, as you saw that after that rollback, there were no further incidences during the time uh, that the, uh, the, the license was rolled back. Um, uh, council, uh, defense council uh, brought up uh, past that the residents of, of station lofts knew they were moving uh, next to a um, late night, uh, a, a uh, night, what are they, nightclub, nightclub bar, right? Well, the Cardosas also knew that a residential development was being built next to his nightclub bar. Uh, the, the businesses that succeed in Brockton are the ones who adapt are the ones who are nimble, who understand what the environment is and reacts to that environment and changes within that environment to, um, to, to be successful. Cardoso's hasn't changed. They haven't adapted to their current situation. Now, I'm not blaming that on Mr. Cardoso. I think uh, council has been um, you know, uh, uh, clear and uh, that Mr. Cardoso does not hold any civil, uh, civil or, or criminal liability here. He's doing the best he can, but the best is, the, but the best that he can do is not working, all right? So now it's up to you, all right? I, again, we are committed to the development of downtown Brockton. We can't continue to allow these types of disturbances to happen. I wish Mr. Cardoso all the best. I, I hope he has a successful business, but he's gonna make some changes. And, um, and, and I hope this uh, commission, um, you know, uh, seriously considers a rollback of the license and, um, and, and see how that can address the situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Appreciate your time. Could I be heard for less than a minute? Just before well, you he, he should be provided with the opportunity. To Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I think I just encourage you, we'll live your decision, obviously, but I'd encourage you all before you take action, maybe even consider leaving this open. If Mr. Cardoso was not trying to secure the detail, which I think would solve all these problems when they see an actual police officer outside, the security guards are doing their best, but a real police officer uh, would be good. Uh, hold off for three months, two, three months, see if it works. And you know, I'm not trying to fight with or argue with Mr. Korb or what have you, but he's a man from Newton Upper Falls putting up a building, an apartment building across from a nightclub in Brockton, having the city pay for many of the units and, and says we could call another police department to have the detail. Then why doesn't he pay for it? Hundreds of millions of dollars going into downtown Brockton and a man from Newton Upper Falls taking them for his apartment building doesn't spring a quarter to, to save his residence he's so concerned about. Maybe Cardoso could split it with them. He could work with them. I'll work with Mr. Korb to get other police departments involved, but give Mr. Cardoso the chance to see if that works before you roll back hours. Mr. Korb told you if you roll back the hours, that would make no difference to him. He won't feel relief. He said it'll just happen at midnight. It'll happen at one. So he's not on board with that being an option. Leave the hours the way they are and let's get a police officer out there. If it doesn't work, then obviously we re re revisit this. But I don't think people outside when they see a uniformed officer are going to be pulling these shenanigans 
because there's, there's more authority to that. So give them an opportunity, I'd ask, leave it open, and we can address it and see if it's cured. We, we, we want to work with you. No, it's clo close, close. Thank you. I just want to add to that statement is that uh, I find lately, as opposed to uh, certainly with all due respect, uh, Council Stanensky, when, when you were the chief, more officers worked bar details, uh, let's say, in that age, that time frame of 30 years ago. Now I find that officers are not that interested in working bar details considering the current environment, plus our staffing levels are very short. Uh, I've gone before the commission before with regards to uh, trying to solve issues with police details, but we can't count on that because of the staffing issues. Even with out-of-town details, I find that officers are, are less willing to work bar details as they used to in the past. So uh, using the police as what could solve the problem, I don't think it's reasonable because I, I can't guarantee that if uh, some action wasn't taken that a police officer would even be available from this city from another city. I, I couldn't guarantee that. And I know that in the past we've had issues with filling details. Uh, mostly retired officers are more willing to work daytime details. Uh, the, available of, the availability of details now are so plentiful that they, every officer, including retired officers, have their choices. Whereas before, when I first had gotten on the job in 96, details were scarce and uh, we, we very much desired them. Now, not so much. Uh, we've had major problems filling police details for late night bars. I would not, certainly not count on the police department. And in terms of the police themselves, with staffing levels and the fact that we have 105,000 people to protect in the city, uh, to drain those resources for a bar uh, at those late night hours is unreasonable for the other residents of the city. And that's how I would like to conclude my statement. We would just ask for a few weeks and maybe not three months to give us an attempt to do that. That's All right. It. We'll, we'll work with other towns, the state police, whatever. We'll, we'll work. We understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to close those portions of the hearing. The commission is now going to deliberate on, on what we're going to take. So um, then I'll go back to you because you were <laughs> you talking before. So. No, I, I, I think I brought out what I wanted here. Okay. I appreciate, I appreciate what everybody had to say. Yep. Uh, very much. Like I said, I'm probably the person in this room who's been in the city longest. Because <laughs> I've seen all the changes. And I was the boss in the wrong 90s, you're right. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, uh, how, just a quick question. Well, how many offices would you say they need for details to get them? If you, if you needed that for detail, considering the disturbances that occur outside, I would say that you, you would need two officers. Uh, number one, because of the safety of the officer involved, you would need two. Right. Uh, I, I'm so concerned about a possibility of injury to the officer, plus with the current environment, uh, the way that it is. Uh, I, I have found it in the last two years or so that officers are not very willing to work bar details as they have been in the past. So uh, to put the, the police department on notice as being responsible for quelling disturbances, other than general calls, uh, I would be hesitant to count on a police detail to be available for uh, much less any bar in the entire city. Thank you. Good. Commissioners. Okay. These are serious, these are very serious charges. I, I, have been involved in the bar business as bartender and, until about six years ago as a bartender. I've got like 25 years experience. I never in my 25 years have seen anything like that. And, and I worked at one of the inner city bars and in 14 years working in inner city bar in the 90s when things were, were real tough, I had the police have to come one time to my bar. Um, there's a lot of over-serving, in my opinion, uh, to my members here, there's a lot of over-serving going on in that bar. The fact that it's always at, at night, whether people are coming in after other bars close, which is historic with a two o'clock license, they, they get a packet, you know, or, they, or they drink too much elsewhere, and they come and finish off their getting drunk at the two o'clock license bar, and then it's very difficult. Um, the management, whoever, and I don't know, other than I hear your daughter's name being put you know, being used here. I don't know what your setup is down there, but there is over-serving going on in that bar to, for it constantly to be occurring at the closing hours with these issues. Um, it's, and, and this issue needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed strongly. 
Um, so we are trying to change the downtown. The people have to feel safe walking down here. Um, and uh, the management has got to, hands-on management has to change, change uh, to, to deal with the issues that are going on in that facility. I haven't been, personally, I haven't been in there since, oh my gosh, when it was a, was a country western <laughs> theme back in the, Don't do that to us. <laughs> it was before Raymond. you took on it yourself. But, but uh, you know, all the bars, and, and again, using my own background, I've never seen that many incidences back to back to back. With, and uh, I'm surprised this is only the third time that, that we've had to bring this bar before us. I just got a question. <clears throat> 20 calls within three months. Does this have to do anything with the COVID? I'm sorry? Does it have to do anything with the COVID? With COVID? Yes. No, uh, I, I believe it has to do with, with Mr. Korb um, wanting, and he'll do, disagree, wanting to have my client's business shut down so he could buy the building. And I tell you why, because I spoke I spoke with Mr. Butler, who's head of the Health Commission in this town, last week. And Mr. Butler told me that Mr. Korb repeatedly files complaints against Mr. Cardoso. He went out to the business and not one of them was substantiated. Like the big picture he showed you of a grassy area with trash that belongs to the gas station next door, which Mr. Cardoso told him about repeatedly. The gas station where you repeatedly see homeless people, drug addicts, and I know that the town is trying to work on that, I, I get it, but it's not Mr. Cardoso's property. Mr. Cardoso's property, it does not include those dumpsters and such. They belong to the restaurant and the gas station next door. But we have serious concerns that Mr. Corp, who told you he goes all around Massachusetts, they put up apartment buildings, they change the landscape of an area, they take money from the city, and then they put out uh, people that own restaurants and bars and what have you. And I'll leave it at that. We have serious concerns about that. He's been here since 2002, and we want to work with the police. And I understand, and I'm the son of a police officer. I get it. There may be short staff. Many may not want to work after hours, what have you. But he's trying. And repeatedly with these complaints, and I know there are a lot. I get that, and I appreciate that you worked in that industry. Repeatedly, one after another, kept the person out, wouldn't let them in. Security there. Call, called, cleared out, the person left by the time we arrived. I mean, there's a lot of volume, but most of this volume, we'd have to agree, with the exception of, of the August 8th incident, where, where he thought his daughter called, but she didn't. Most of this, it's cleared out, there's no problems. And I, I can appreciate that residents who live across the street don't like loud noise and music and what have you, but you, you can't put up a building when you're, you're in the business of going around Massachusetts and, and, and play dumb that I had no idea that, that we would hear loud noise and see incidents that happen outside of bar rooms and what have you. And it's extreme, I'll get that. And that's why we're trying to work with the police. But to say we put it up and thought, this is great, we want a bar nightclub across the street. It's just a disingenuous position to take when you put that across the street from a place you know, if you do any research whatsoever, and you'd have to believe Mr. Koft who's in the business of putting up these buildings and taking money from cities he has nothing to do with. Like he said, he lives in Newton Upper Falls, he's here in Brockton, okay. takes, we, takes money from them yeah, so. and, and tells you, I, I didn't Council, know it would Council, be loud. Councilor, uh, where, where do you live again? I'm sorry? Where you live, where's your address? Uh, in Quincy. In Quincy. And I lived in Brockton, and I went I, to the I Brookfield understand. School, just so, so you all I, know. I have a, I have okay. a few, <laughs> Commissioner, Exterior, so I have a few questions. I even played Little League here. So um, <laughs> the, um, this bar got an, this bar had an incident back in 2012. The building was not there at the time. Tell me about what, in respects of the incidents that happened prior to even this, the building being up, to what has been, since this building's been around for seven years, and since I've been on the commission, this, um, I was a part of the violation that happened prior, so I have some, these photos of patrons, I don't see any, I, don't, I can't tell who's staff at 1.49 in the morning to be very, uh, on this day, to be very honest, I was on this commission when we, rolled Mr. Cardo's back and then we reissued him that these things that we're seeing in photos again and we have video 
could not go on because this 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 creates chaos for not only Mr. Cardoza, the residents, the police, you know, the law department, the commissioners here, because if you're not sending people home, they're going to stew, and these type of things are going to happen. People are going to get stabbed, shot, hit and run. So. 2012, there was an incident where someone got hurt. We're now in 2021, and there's an incident where someone got hurt. The buildings weren't even there. Mr. Corb wasn't here. Understand. He wasn't a part of the city. He didn't take any money. So from 2012 to now, can you explain to me what has changed with this business? Well, what I would say, and I appreciate that it's a good question. Before Mr. Corb put up the building in 2012, I just think it would be naive to expect that bars where people drink alcohol, there are not going to be issues or fights periodically. It's just the nature of that type of business. And I, I understand you worked at a place that had one call in 25 years, but I would say that would be the exception, not the norm. We're in an area, in, and I, I argued before the commission a few years ago, it's, where he's located, it, we're not in, in Westwood. We're not in New, Newton Upper Falls. And I don't mean that sarcastically to Mr. Corb. He can let, no, I'm saying. I mean, we're not in downtown Quincy either. I mean. No, no, but he's in an area that, that, that's not extremely affluent. It's the truth. Let, let's deal in reality. He's in an area where people come in there that, that might have issues, might have. Um, Council, Council, I need you. To, I mean, oh. I need. So I'm asking. So between 2012. In 2021, there was an incident then. This building was not existent. Mr. Corb was not here. We didn't know who he was. What has changed from then to now? What has changed? Again, I don't want to hear about police details and this and that because, again, police do not have to take details at a location. And police won't take details at a bar where they can get hurt and not go home to their families. It just doesn't make sense for them to do. So unless you change the dynamic of the environment there, no police are ever going to want to be a detail there because they want to go home to their families. They want to be safe. I mean, you could put three cops there, and I don't think it would make a difference from what I'm seeing in these pictures. I would beg to differ because when they see a person in uniform, it's why Massachusetts has police officers on details rather than, than, than regular citizens. And that's argued by the police constantly because they say if there's not an actual police officer there, people will not adhere to the rules at a police, at a construction site, for example. Now, Mr. Cardoso, you, had, you heard from two police officers who told you he's not permitting any of the activities. He's stopping people from coming in. He has two professional security guards there on the weekends. He's doing everything he can. He keeps the video on for 20 days, not 14, and is agreeing to do 30, 60, whatever you want. He works with the police. He's forthcoming. He speaks to them. He, keeps, he stops people from entering. When there are incidences inside the bar, he gets the people out with the security. If they can't handle it internally, they call the police for the, the routine call. There's not much more he can do. He's proactively sought help, and, and if details are not available, I understand that, and I know there are incidences. So, so that, that's the question. There are still incidents. What can he do? What, so what, so, so from 2012. I understand from 2012. To 2001, and even from 2018 when we rolled them back, what has changed besides, again, me being, me being here when that happened, right? This looks even worse than when I was, when we uh, rolled them back before. There, it's a, it's 158. There are people out. There are cars going towards the bar, not going away from it. Right. So again, we have a professional security company, as you stated, Councilor. You 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 have a professional security company that's that's professional. You said it many times. Right. So I'm sure they're in professional attire. I'm sure they look like. Police officers, if they were, again, they're they professional. Like they look like professional security guards. Right. So you have a deterrent there. I, but they don't have. A I don't a see bag. one. I don't see one person with the security thing. I don't see one person trying to corral. I looked at the video. I didn't see management. I didn't see anyone of management in a picture. That's a great point, and I want to address that because. If Mr. Cardoso's security guards went off property, like for example, it's very close to where the gas station property is. If they were to go over to there, they would leave the door unattended. And then we would be here because somebody would say that the allegation would be somebody came in after hours because they were not guarding the door. There were three businesses within a few feet of each other. You have a restaurant, Mr. Cardoso, a gas station, and, and then you have the loft apartments. 
So Mr. Cardoso cannot be responsible for all of that. Although, and I understand if people are leaving there, I, I get that. Uh, we're willing to work with the town. And, and I believe certainly now that, that, that there's funding that, that, that's decreasing for COVID and what have you, more people are getting back in the workforce. And, and I believe if we're allowed a little bit of time and I'll work with Mr. Cardoso and, and, the, and the commission, we will be able to get professional police, real police officers in front of that, that establishment to set the tone that this is a person that carries a weapon, they have a badge, they have full police authority, not just a security guard. And, and I don't mean to demean security guards, <coughs> but as you would even well, you have, you, it's you, different when it's a you police You stated officer. that the it's security different. guards were professional, right. they were trained. And look at the job I've they're heard doing. That they kept people out, mess, they kicked they, them out, they stopped them from coming in, they called the police. So, but again, so, what, so uh, just <laughs> I'm going to end with this. So typically from my experience, short time on this earth, that the element is what's bringing the people there. So there's a particular element that are bringing people to the door to kick it. They're bringing people to the door to try to get in. I don't know, again, I'm not, I haven't been in Mr. Cardoza's business in a very long time. They're Cape Verde. I don't, excuse These me, They're Cape Verde people they're, that are coming to his establishment. There are plenty of decent I mean, people I wouldn't, that come to his establishment. Counselor, I wouldn't say that that's the element. I would say that those are the people that are probably coming. But what I'm trying to articulate to you is there's an element that is in that establishment that is creating this outside, in the bar, these calls. And again, like, like, like the attorney states is, you know, this is, this is more than just, you know, this is a public health issue. I mean, this is more than just what we're talking about here. Because I, I, I understand that you're here to defend your client, but it's 158, it's 158, it's 155. There are cars going towards the business. Okay, so, so I would ask you then, and, and the it, interest of problems, because I understand, and I'm not just here to defend my client and be disingenuous. I, I want to work with you and let, let's, let's solve this. If police details are not available, what would you suggest for him to do outside? So, because he's willing to do it. So He wants to work uh, to get this done. So this is, this, again, I said I was in the end. So it is not to this commission to come up with solutions for your client's business. Your client should come, come with solutions to us and we can say, hey, those sound like good solutions. Hey, Lieutenant, do you think that's a great idea? Hey, law department, do you think that's a great idea? But for me to come up with suggestions to run your client's day-to-day -day business is not what the commission's here to do. The, commission's here to, the commission is here to listen to the facts, and the facts are pretty staunch in that obviously they are not controlling the exit of, the, of, of patrons leaving their business. From photos, again, this is not on, someone on some, in the pod. On some occasions, on, some occasions on the occasions that I'm witnessing right. from here, on 20 call logs, and I do believe that some of those calls came from residents. They said there was loud noise. Right. I mean, who else is going to call besides the residents to say it's loud noise? I mean, it, you know, these people know what they signed up for, so they signed up to be next to a bar, right? right. To live next to a bar to listen to loud music at times, but not to have people loitering on their streets, throwing up on their driveways, parking in their spots, um, getting arrested in front of their building. People do not sign up for that. I agree. They, they just don't. So, you know, I think, I think what you and your client should really try to do is come up with solutions, work with your neighbors, and come up with solutions because the battering ram of this is not going to work out. I mean, since 2012, nothing's changed this business. 8, 2018, no, still no police details after we rolled you back. So I don't understand what the real argument is well, when it comes to... Well, he, he, well he, in fairness to Mr. Cardoso, he tried to have police details. And it's a good idea. We'll work with the state police and we'll work with other departments. And maybe they won't, but maybe they will. If not, we'll restructure the entire outside of, of the business out there, and maybe we'll get more security or have parking, professional parkers or what have you uh, out there. So, so it's, it's just more structured and people know to get out. We'll have people encouraging outside to get out, go to your cars, get lost. I believe Mr. Cardozo wants to say something. First of all, I want to address this commission. I understand the situation for the law firm. I know the people make a noise. My kind of people, 
they don't listen, especially on summertime. I understand that. I'm not the one promoting the kind of issues. I have a lot of conversation with the lieutenant. He's, he's, he's asked me to have some idea. He's told me, can you make a plan? What am I thinking? From the date I talked to him for now, I started turning the music early, like half hours prior to the time. Because more than 50% people inside oh, is, yes. is they only live for dancing. They started leaving one by one, two, three, two, three, two, three. The way at the two o'clock, when I ask everybody to leave permits, it's not much people. It's a little bit easy. That's my cooperation I try to do. I understand the situation for Mr. For Mr. Of course. But I can do anything outside. I have no control outside. So stopping the music, I, I, lowering I, I, it I feel, at, at, I, at 1.30, he's trying to trickle people out rather than have everybody congregate. Yeah, I feel confident if, if you have a way to stop that. But my kind of people is not the kind of people uh, Mr. Hebel, when you have you around the bar, it's not the same kind of people, it's not the same education, it's not the same issue. Oh, yeah, Things well. is different, especially my people. I won't get back again, I say my people. Other situation, I feel a little hard for Mr. Corb's side because early in June they call ABC two eyes on me. They call early, like 8 or 7 June, they call ABC on me. The guys go over there and do the investigation. At the end of June, they call. The ring, the the July, his big call is we pushing back all the time. He's, he's addressed to the to the health and the board two times to complain against me, but they don't see nothing. They don't see any violation. ABC go, they don't find any, any violation. They do a lot of things to push me away. I understand that. I understand the his situation, but this is something make me feel afraid. That's why I keep call all the time. Any suits, I call the police because I want to get off the situation. I want. To, I don't want bother him, I don't want to bother anybody, that's what I'm going to try to do it. That's, that's what I'm going to try to work on to see if he gets solutions Mr. for Cardoza, this. Mr. Cardoza, since 2012, that first incident, to 2021, what have you done differently that to work with your neighbors, you know? Me and the people who work on the gas station, we do very good, very friendly. Just to let you know, they let me park, they let me use the parking lot, no issues. Other restaurant next to me is a sister and sister. We cook uh, as best we can. We don't complain against them, nothing. We do very good relationship. We do as best we can. No, but with this, the, with this, start over this, like this. So we have, I don't know if you've seen some of these pictures. Right, somebody getting arrested like, out front. I know, I know this, them. someone's getting arrested. The, the, like these, those things, like what are, what are we doing for for those incidents. Since two, so since 2012, another incident that I was aware of, that I was here, 2018, and now we're here in 2021. First of all, let you know, when I buy the place is only bar. I switch for bar restaurant to create a different procedures. I work on, I try to hire the best people. I hire best people with the uh, human uh, resource to work on and try to do as best I can. I'm gonna kind of make you spend more than 40 hours on the bar to keep eyes on that. I don't spend just a little hour. No, I'll be there every single day meeting with you. Every single day I'll be there through the end of the night. I follow all the steps. This is what I try to create to get the small bus better better issues to modify and get the, the things good. I believe the city is happy to me because my kitchen is the one, the best one in the, in the town. I have a, I have a good people work there. That's a, some some promotion I try to do. That's some that's some improvement I try to do. I don't go as lot because my financial situation is not good to go that way. But little by little, I try as best I can. I do the best I can. I prepare as best I can. Like I'm telling you, I'm trying to decrease. I start music like 30 minutes prior to the closing time to let the people go little by little. The way I don't get people yeah. at the same time. The way they join outside. They go in the car, they put the music, on, they bring outside the car, he, they do stuff like and, that. And he just started that. So he's, that, that's something we're starting and we're going to be working to get more police presence there. So I think with that, that's why I say, hold off. Let's see if, don't, don't give it three months. Give it a month. Give it two weeks. No, we're, we're going to make a decision tonight. Because that's right. what, but what I'm saying. If we're, you, if we're, we're, here, back, we're here to make a decision. So I, I understand that. Tonight. So you guys, you guys, you guys all set? Yes, thank you. 
So we, obviously we've had uh, lieutenant, detectives here, patrolmen, our council here, and the recommendation is to roll back to 12. Uh, the recommendation would be to roll back at least one hour every day of the to week. One? At least so, one hour every day of the week, so it would be so one the o'clock. To on roll Thursday, back one yep. hour. So it would be in midnight Sunday because there's a lot of Sunday night activity Sunday through Wednesday, and the commission's, you know, okay. Yeah. And um, a one o'clock. Yeah, and you know, this is we all have our own. Own my, in my opinion, this business has gotten a lot of opportunity to change. An incident happened in 2012. This building wasn't even here. There were no residents. And there were still incidents. 2018, there was an incident of, uh, of when, I, when I was president. Uh, Detective Nazir Paul witnessed someone entering the establishment after hours, and that ensued into a disturbance. So again, there is a little bit of history here. I, we, you know, you know, God bless Hank. Hank we want to keep businesses going. We want to keep people in business. We don't want to close anyone down. But again, what, what has been portrayed in front of us today is the amount of incidents. I mean, it's just, you can't continue to run. There's an element in that business that no, no one on this commission, not the police department, Jason Korb, the the ward counselor, none of us can change. The owner has to change that element. And that's that's kind of where I'll leave it. And I'll ask for a motion to take the lot of uh, the, our council. If I may. Yes. This before the commission is a violation of the um, rule, ABC's rule 2.05. ABC's rule. Um, and if I may, I just, one more thing. Um, while the city understands that Mr. Cardoza has probably done everything he can to try and correct these problems, there is an element about a two o'clock closing. No, sir, as we know, no um, surrounding towns are open that night. So you're attracting people and it has nothing to do with Mr. Tr Cardozo. It is the two o'clock closing itself and, and there's something here that just, so that's why the recommendation is, is an hour. If, if more is, feel if the commission feels that it needs to be more, that's one thing, but. I would just um, say briefly that under the letter of the rule, I'll just leave it here. Two officers testified that Mr. Cardoso did not permit anything, and that's required under the, the, the rule. And I just note that um, no, the, it doesn't meet the, the standard. The, the the letter of the rule says that the disturbance happened. And, and the, the, he, the, but he has to permit it, though. Right. The city's permission. Permit, permit, permit. The city's position is that by not making, not reporting it to the police, police. at the time it was happening, was permitting it Which in violation of um, the Brockton Commission's rules. But the, there was no real evidence that that was willful or uh, that that's consistently done and that, that it, it should be inferred through any reasonable circumstantial evidence that Mr. Cardoso meant to do that when he has a history of calling. So, so again, before the commission is whether or not there was a violation of ABC uh, rule uh, 2.05 section 2, even if the commission finds that it's not, um, that there was no violation, the standard for a rollback is whether there's a public need. And the city's position is even if there's no violation, which we our position is that it, there was a violation, even if there was not, if there is a public need for a rollback that is permissible to uh, issue I, the I am, in, I am in the ag agreement that there is a definite public need in this instance. I, I, um, so I, first what I would address whether or not there was a violation of the ABCC rule. I, I would say that there is a violation. I think Lieutenant went above and beyond to find out if a call was made from the establishment. It was a lapse in judgment, but it happened. So, I mean. So you're ruling it was intentional? I'm ruling that there well, was there, a violation no. of the rules. I'm not ruling that it was intentionally done, but. So there would be a motion to find the violation? M motion to find a viola violation of ABCC rule 2.05, uh, paragraph two to wit. No license to sale of alcohol beverages shall permit any disorder, disturbance, illegality of any kind to take place in or on licensed premises. The license shall be responsible whether present or not. Uh, and that was from August 8th, 2021 at approximately 0108 hours. And I need a second. I need a second. If not, then. On the motion. On the motion. 
Can I ask Ms. Cardozo as an attorney, does he have any policy that says that those security people are his agents? Well, he hired a professional security company because- Does he have, does he have a written policies how to operate his place? Because I grew up in this business. Right. The place where the disturbance happened, if they didn't call, then they were allowing it. That's the way I learned it. And I'm looking at all these different calls, and so I'm wondering, I mean, I'm looking for somebody who wants to work together. Right. And I don't know whether it's gonna happen, a council could possibly help us. We need some people who want to, who want to work together. Well, I think just, and just to answer the commissioner's statement, I think it's clear defense council has some, you know, animosity or at least some contempt for Brockton. We are not West Newton or those other neighborhoods in which he, right. Well, I see that he seems, well, I believe in my opinion that you clearly have contempt for our city and you spent half of your argument disparaging Mr. Korb, who has been a great neighbor and a great partner for Brockton. So I don't know if there's a way forward. I think I think council shows contempt for our city, contempt for Mr. Korb, and how do you work with a gentleman who has such contempt? Thank you. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So we're stating the obvious is not not contempt, and, and I really don't appreciate. So we're gonna we're gonna close the portion of public comment, and we're we're we have a we have a motion. A mo uh, we don't have a second on the motion. One gentleman. I've just got some problems with this. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. You've been doing this quite a while, I happen to know. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, I'm looking for a way, I think you know how I operate, I built. I built, I built 25,000 people on Prime Watch during the roaring 90s in Brockton. We worked to work together to get things going, keep them going get people to live here, get here to own the business or run the business. I actually voted as a counselor on this building. I was on the council at the time. I think I understand, I, I'm looking at, at the different items and I'm trying to figure a way, how, how bad is it among, and I, I'm gonna ask this question, council may have checked. How bad is it among the troops? They don't wanna go near there? Well, certainly uh, over the uh, years or decades, policing has changed. And um, the availability of details now is, is there's a plethora of details available. And officers, not only from Brockton, but from surrounding towns have their choice to fill de for details and whatnot. And we have not had really any interest from detail, from detail people here in the city and from outside the city of working bar details. It's been, it's a, it's a total change. And because of the environment, and to be honest, without going into too much detail, there's been a lot of anti-police sentiment and uh, officers at bars uh, have had some negative experiences that they haven't had in, in recent years. And the preference to work those details, that, that has, is, it's a thing of the past. Yeah. I can't guarantee that if I was going to come to this commission and say, and, and someone was to ask me, well, what about the police? Because of the 105,000 people that we have to protect in this city to have the, inordinate, um, the, the resources available to concentrate on any particular bar, I, I would be dishonest to, to tell this commission that the police would be able to assist in a way that uh, we would be able to resolve their problems. <coughs> I would not be able to sit here in all honesty and actually say that, this problem will be solved by the police alone. No, that's, that's not my question, though. yeah. But they don't want to work these details. Okay. So we, he can't guarantee, we can't guarantee a police officer is ever gonna be there. Well, we could hire from an armed security company that has badges and official uniforms. We could try that. There's more authority, uh, more of a show of authority with that, and we'd explore that. Okay. I'd say, gentlemen, a motion's before the floor. Um, so there's been a motion, looking, hasn't been seconded yet. 
to find out if he permitted this. And that's, that, that's what maybe you need to vote on now. I can't, I can't no. second the motion. No. So well, the, mo the motion. Then the motion dies. You would then vote on that motion. So, so, so you, you would We'd motion vote. and then there can be a second of that motion and then you vote, vote on what's before. Vote, yeah, so we, you can vote. Did you have the testimony read the motion again, please? Um, I, I can read it. Okay. So, yeah. um, Mr. McGarry, you, you want to read it or you? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it again. The, uh, the motion uh, was to find them um, that they did, they did violate the ABCC rule 2.05 to no license sale of alcohol beverage shall permit any disorder, disturbance, or illegality of any kind to take place in or on the licensed premises. Uh, and that was from August 8th, 2021, at approximately 0108 hours. You, so to second the motion does not mean you're necessarily in favor? Yeah, to yeah. second the motion doesn't mean you're in favor of saying that he... It, it's it's no, so that the commission it's, can no, hear no, the motion. No, that's procedural. Yeah. So the August 8th, I didn't hear anything on the August 8th. In testimony. That was the stabbing. That was the stabbing. And the hit and run. And the hit and run. Oh, okay. All right. That was the most recent event. Okay. I'll second it. Bring us to the floor. So now you All in favor of the violation ABCC rule 205, number two. So finding the bar guilty. Finding the bar guilty. All in favor? Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? We have two abstentions. Two, two, two dies. Dies. Um, Thank you. So what if I may, Commissioner, um, again, as I stated, you don't have to find the bar. Uh, yeah, we're going to make a motion rule. on the rollback. Um, um, so yeah. there's, so the, the motion would be whether or not there's a public need to roll back the outright yeah. bar. So, as... Council just said, um, is there a public need to roll this establishment back? I'm of the thought of yes. I think that when, when we did this back in 2018, it worked for the residents. They were happier. The business then was able to thrive and get their procedures together or whatever they were doing. But I think that element that went away came back, so I believe that we should roll it back an hour. Um, we should, I think we should roll it back to, uh, to noon on, I mean to noon? midnight, I'm sorry. <laughs> to midnight on, on um, Friday, Saturday. That would be two hours. That's my, I mean, again, this Just is, Commission's That's, information, there, again, there's a two o'clock closing on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and a one o'clock closing Sunday through Wednesday. Yeah. That's not what they were asking. So it's... it's so if, if we rolled them back one hour, seven days... So the, the city's position is that we rolled them back one hour. My position is that we rolled them back two. So again, we can collectively come to come to some type of understanding where we collectively think that the one o'clock from the city's position or entertain my position. First, there could be a motion whether or not there's a public need to roll back the hours. I, I think we could just make a motion on the rollback. Okay. Point. Well, I would appreciate if you made a motion to, to procedurally to see if it was necessary at all. I, I, so there, I just would, to perfect the record. Mm -hmm. I, we don't have to do that. We can make a motion on the rollback. We, are, we already discussed all of those other things. I would just and the, that portion is close, sir. Well, and just, Sorry. just Sorry. has to find a public need for the rollback. Public need. We can put that in the motion. Mm -hmm. So we'll make the motion. I mean, I think just, just procedurally, I think it's best to have two votes one about public need and then one on a rollback. Again, we want to protect the record here. We don't want anything appealable. All right. So let's get, let's get this right. So, so Let's, all right, so let's make a motion on um, if there's a public need. Do, do we believe there's a public need for a rollback? 
or a motion that there is a public there, need a motion that, that there is a public need for rollback. We make a motion. There's a public need for a rollback. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion to roll back the, their operating hours, uh, closing hour till midnight, seven days. I, I need a second on that motion. Again, a second would just to be to vote on it. We're going two hours instead of one hour. Two hours versus one hour. And what's the term? It would be two hours. That motion would make it two hours Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and one hour for the rest of the week because the closing is already 1 a.m. And is this for how long? Is it six months, a year? And, uh, the city asked indefinite. Um, the past two rollbacks were for six months. Six months. So this would be indefinite. This, this, they wouldn't be. Well, it, it's no. up to the commission. Yeah, I mean, they can come. They can petition yeah, to come back before us, right, council? Right, because it's indefinite. Yeah. So. Again, we got to be fair. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a, uh, it's a business. Yep. He's trying to run the business. I mean, here, listen. I understand the concern. I own a business not too far from his place. And he's willing to address all of this too, just so you know. That and, portion's close, sir. And if he's willing to work with us, we can move back like six months. Now, just come and revisit us. Okay, six months. Stipulations will work. Both parties will work. And together. No, no, it's, it's closed. We're, we're deliberating. No more public oh, okay. comment. Okay, sorry. I thought. No more public comment. We can okay. make recommendations and we can give it to them, but we're just going to deliver. Right. You know, just to go back one hour, like the city's, you know. I, I mean, it's, it's that's what we're here to do. To I think talk it's fair. The best. And if it happens again, if the accident, you know, the accident happens again, then we can just bring it back for us. And definitely. Can I, can I add something? Sure. sure. So I believe, so let's do an hour but indefinite, and if they have a good track record, we don't have anything, we can go back, and they want to come before us, and we talk to lieutenant, and there's, we don't see 20 incidents in less than a month, I, I'm okay with that, but I think it needs, it can't be six months, no, no, it, if I, it, I'm with two hours, I'm willing to give away an hour, but it has to be indefinite. So sure. that's. Is that a motion? I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. The other motion's gone. That's, that's motion. the motion, yes. Second. Someone please read the motion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the motion before you is it's motion to roll back the hours of operation seven days a week by one hour, which would result in a uh, Sunday through Wednesday closure of midnight, Thursday, Friday, Saturday closure of 1 a.m. indefinitely. Whose motion is that? I think that's, that's, that's good job. <laughs> is there a second? Second on that motion. I was a second. Yeah, second. Second. Yeah. So the motion has been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. So that does not carry. No. No, it does. It does carry. Oh, it does carry. Three, three, three to one. one. Yeah, three to one. Uh, carry. All right. All right. I think we are we are good. Thank you all for your consideration, and I apologize if I was interrupting at some point. No problem. Um, can we have a any other business, uh, Lieutenant? The uh, item that we we passed oh, over. We passed over the Dover. The, that, the idol that, that was canceled, we have to, uh, we, have was, to uh, read it. we have to read it in George's Northern Lights. He, he didn't come back. He didn't come back. So, so we, do we read it and, uh, and ask for me that? Well, we've got to act on it. On yeah, we have to move yeah, it. Okay. So here are a request from George Northern Lights, Inc., doing business as George's, to remain open until 3 a.m. on New Year's Eve, January 1st, 2020, for a New Year's Eve celebration being held on December 31st, 2021, located at 220, 228, uh, Rear Belmont Street, Brockton, Mass. The applicant is not here, so we have, uh, I need a motion to withdraw this. Make a motion to withdraw. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we just need a- uh, Motion to adjourn. M motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. Woo! Did I have?